modern aircraft continue to be one of the most strategic elements in warfare. During Russia's invasion of Ukraine, air defense systems with superior success rates, combat helicopters, and more were used in the battlefield. However, the era of these aircraft seems to have passed. Unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned fighter jets have become the most critical assets that can change the fate of a clash situation. Sixth generation fighter jets and stealthy unmanned combat vehicles equipped with superior avionics capabilities are at the top of this ecosystem. For this reason, countries such as the US, China, Russia, North Korea, Ukraine, and Turkey are trying to specialize in unmanned aerial vehicles and unmanned combat aircraft. Among these, Ukraine and Turkey really stand out. While Turkey is impressing its competitors with its latest moves in this field, the products born in Turkey in defense cooperation with Ukraine are dealing a devastating blow to Russia. The fact that Ukraine also contributed to the development of Turkey's stealthy, unmanned combat vehicles equipped with superior avionics capabilities is pushing Putin into panic mode. So what is Turkey's incredible new player in the field of unmanned fighter jets? Is there a possibility that this unmanned fighter jet, which can be controlled from an airplane, will be sent to Ukraine while the war continues? We will explore all these questions together in the video. The Ukrainian army is currently aiming to become a leader in UAV production and technologies. For this, it has been in close cooperation with Turkey since 2018. The reason for Ukraine's desire to be more advanced in UAVs is clear. To gain the superiority in the aerial warfare against Russia. The US, on the other hand, wants to keep the lead in the competition with China and North Korea in the field of drones and unmanned combat vehicles. However, the actor that needs Kraus the most attention here seems to be Turkey, which has gained an important position with its role as a mediator in the Ukraine war. As we all know, the famous Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2 unmanned aerial vehicle was the hope for Ukraine at the beginning of the war. Turkey produces important air monsters such as TB2, TB3, Akunchu, Sezeri, Malazgirt helicopter, UAV, and VTL. Turkey is also conducting an unmanned combat aircraft project called Kızılelma. This important actor, the first unmanned combat vehicle for Turkey, was unveiled in the summer of 2021. And the Kizilelma was seen on the assembly line in March 2022. Baykar conducted the first engine integration test for the unmanned jet in September 2022. Turkey's moves in the field of unmanned fighter jets are not limited to Kizilelma. There is a critical period in which Russia aims to blockade the Black Sea with fighter jets and helicopters. In this process, Turkey, one of the most important actors in the region, has put Russia on the back burner by unveiling an unmanned fighter jet that can be controlled from an airplane for the first time. Turkish Aerospace Industries unveiled the Anka 3, marking a significant advance in fighter jet technology. Developed by TAI, the stealthy unmanned combat aircraft Anka 3 represents an advance in remote control capabilities for military aviation, becoming the first drone in history to be controlled by another aircraft. Anka 3 is a stealth combat unmanned aerial vehicle that incorporates the latest generation of unmanned technologies, combining autonomy and advanced combat capabilities. Its aerodynamic design and radar-absorbing materials allow it to increase its survivability in conflict zones by reducing its radar signature. The ability to be controlled from another aircraft opens new operational perspectives for air forces, facilitating complex missions in high-risk areas, while reducing vulnerabilities associated with ground control. TAI's Anka 3 stealth unmanned aerial vehicle has been under development for several years as part of Turkey's efforts to strengthen its autonomous and technological defense capabilities. Designed for surveillance, reconnaissance, 
precision strikes and operations in hostile environments. This unmanned aerial vehicle aims to complement and diversify the Turkish military's combat capabilities in areas where human presence is risky. Supported by the Turkish government as part of a national military independence strategy, Anka 3 also benefits from collaborations with local industries specializing in avionics and stealth. It thus strengthens Turkey's defense technology ecosystem and reduces its dependence on foreign technology in the field of advanced, unmanned aerial vehicle systems. From a purely technical point of view, the Ankadari is equipped with a single AI-322 engine, which allows the drone to reach a maximum speed of 450 knots. The drone's service ceiling is 12,000 meters, while its maximum ceiling is 40,000 feet. The future version of the Anka 3 is likely to be larger and capable of carrying heavier payloads. Its shape will need to be revised and optimized for supersonic speeds. On the other hand, the integration of stealth drones that can be controlled from other aircraft, such as the Anka 3, represents an important strategic interest for the armed forces. This technology responds to the growing demand for remote and autonomous warfare solutions in an increasingly complex threat environment, maximizing flexibility and operational efficiency. Controlling a drone from another aircraft opens the door to loyal wingman missions, where drones work alongside manned fighters. This approach combines the advantages of drones, stealth, autonomy, and no human risk, with the computational power and precision of pilots, providing more diverse and redundant tactical options. In the same vein, ANCA-3 enables air forces to conduct surveillance, reconnaissance, and precision strike missions in highly contested areas without endangering the human pilot. This technology is particularly valuable for deep missions in well-defended areas where radar and missile defense systems make conventional attacks more risky. Furthermore, the ability to control these drones from manned aircraft improves response in the event of a tactical change. And this capability allows drones to be rapidly deployed in coordination with fighter aircraft for targeted strikes or enemy defense suppression missions. Because of these important game-changing features, countries such as the United States and China are developing similar projects, trying to develop wingman drone concepts to accompany their air forces. The United States has invested in several similar programs, the best known being the Skyborg program led by the U.S. Air Force, which aims to develop embedded AI for drones that can coordinate and interact with manned aircraft in real time. An example of an advanced drone in this program is the Kratos XQ-58A Valkyrie, designed to operate alongside manned combat aircraft such as the F-35 or F-22, providing surveillance, attack, or enemy defense suppression missions. Unlike the Anka-3, American drones are designed for full autonomy in case of disconnection from the pilot and have advanced AI capabilities that allow for independent decision-making. China, on the other hand, is developing crawling drone systems such as the GJ-11 Sharp Sword and Stealthy Companion Drones. The latter, a stealth combat drone, is intended to operate in coordination with fifth-generation fighter jets such as the J-20. While less advanced in terms of direct control from another aircraft, Chinese drones incorporate AI technologies to coordinate swarm operations that offer tactical advantages to saturate enemy defenses. China is also seeking to compensate for control center vulnerability with increased drone autonomy with an emphasis on stealth and penetration in heavily defended environments. Unlike the American and Chinese systems, TAI's Anka-3 stands out for its ability to be controlled entirely from another aircraft, providing instant interoperability and operational flexibility without requiring comparable levels of autonomy in AI. Such control on the Anka-3 supports communication security and enables direct response to the intentions of a partner aircraft pilot.
Moreover, designed to be stealthy, the Anka-3 combines advanced radar avoidance technologies with an aerodynamic design that makes it an effective tool in high-threat environments. The Anka-3 is therefore a valuable asset for the Turkish Armed Forces, offering an intermediate solution between the full autonomy of American and Chinese drones and direct collaborative control. The platform's ability to interoperate with manned aircraft puts Turkey at the forefront of jointly controlled drone operations while aligning with a global trend to increase stealth and autonomy in unmanned combat systems. Of course, the production and development status of the Anka-3 is also a source of hope for Ukraine. The Anka-3 unmanned combat aircraft, which are expected to be delivered in 2026, may eventually be allocated to Ukraine. In that case, if the war is still going on at that time, Kiev would have a very important game-changing air component in its inventory against Moscow. Another hope for Ukraine, and one of Russia's nightmares, is the Herjet fighter jet, developed by Tai alongside the Anka-3. The Herjet is a turbofan-engined, advanced jet training and close air support aircraft. The Herjet is intended to replace the T-38 Talon aircraft used by the Turkish Air Force as jet training aircraft and train fighter pilots. It is also planned to replace the Northrop F-5 aircraft used by the Turkish Stars. In the coming years, a naval variant of the Hurjet that can take off and land on TCG Anadolu and aircraft carriers is also being considered. This will be an incredible opportunity for Turkey. Thanks to the integration of Herjet and TCG Anadolu, Turkey can prevent any possibility of a Russian encirclement against Ukraine from the Black Sea. Thai officials consider the Herjet to be very important for the development of Turkey's aviation industry. The project is expected to provide an industrial transition between the Hürkuş project, which has achieved successful results and is being continued with new versions, and the National Combat Aircraft Project, which is currently underway. The light attack aircraft model of the Herjet, which has a payload capacity of 3,000 kilograms, will be armed for use in missions such as light attack, close air support, border security, and counter-terrorism in the armed forces of Turkey and friendly and allied countries. This could point to Putin's military being targeted from different areas in the event that Russia takes an international stance against Turkey. On January 12, 2022, the Defense Industry Executive Committee convened and announced that the first stage mass production decision was taken for the Hurjet, which will make its first flight next year. As of May 2022, part production of the first prototype aircraft was completed. It was decided to produce the Hurjet with the General Electric F404 engine. Although it was planned to produce a domestic turbofan engine as a definitive solution, it was thought that the domestic engine would not be available for the first production Hurjets. The General Electric F404 turbofan engine will be integrated into the aircraft to be produced during this period. Capable of reaching Mach 1.4 speed, the Herjet is an air monster with a length of 13.6 meters, a wingspan of 9.5 meters, and a height of 5.1 meters. Even if Ukraine does not get this unmanned combat vehicle in the first place, the presence of the Herjet in the Turkish military inventory will probably reassure the Kiev government. This is because Turkey has supported Ukraine since the early days of the war, in addition to its role as a mediator. The Ankara government, of course, has some fundamental reasons for supporting Kiev. One of these reasons is Russia's occasional threat to the regions within Turkey's sphere of influence by taking steps to expand its influence beyond Ukraine. In this context, Turkey's assistance to Ukraine in the field of unmanned aerial vehicles is an obvious fact. For example, Baikar's Akinci combat drone and Kuzilelma combat drone, which were introduced in 2021, use Ukrainian-made Ivchenko Progress engines. Kizilelma is even called the brave Turkish bird in Ukraine. However, as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, TB2s have a very special place among the drones 
Turkey has sent to Ukraine. The TB2s have become intrinsically linked to the public's perception of Ukraine's underdog struggle against Moscow. Samuel Bendit, an expert on artificial intelligence and unmanned systems at the U.S.-based CNA research organization, said that the TB2 was a successful drone in the early stages of the war, when the Russian military's air defenses and electronic warfare systems were relatively disorganized. But as Russia strengthened its defensive positions, especially after the first wave of the invasion, it became more organized. And by using its air defense, electronic warfare capabilities, Russia transformed the TB2 from a Ukrainian spike into a target that its own military forces could confidently challenge. Analysts have also predicted a change in the use of TB2s as a direct result of Russia's change in air defense tactics during the war. We should know that every weapon system is useful in a specific context and under specific military conditions. The TB2 was most effective when Russian supply lines were overstretched in a multi-front, large-scale and stumbling invasion campaign. In addition, the TB2 has an advanced sensor suite and was able to guide other assets such as drones and missiles to targets while remaining out of range of many Russian defense systems. After the Ukrainians improved their drone capabilities, there have been reports that the use of TB2 drones has been limited and that they are only used in certain special operations. This was because other drones were cheaper than TB2s. While media coverage of the TB2 has decreased, there is reason to believe that the drone continues to operate inside Ukrainian territory and performs fewer public tasks. It is difficult to estimate actual TB2 activity based solely on publicly available data and social media posts, which are always selective about content, meaning that it is likely to have flown many missions that were simply not publicized. The TB2 may also have been a victim of its own success. Given the global interest in drones, the Ukrainian government may be concerned about the propaganda victory that could come if the Russians managed to shoot down one of the Turkish systems. The exact number of TB2 drones in Ukraine's arsenal is unknown. Current media reports indicate that Ukraine has received around 50 drones since the start of the war. At the start of the war, Kiev had around 20 TB2s. Such a small number makes TB drones much more valuable for Ukraine. However, the biggest sign of the TB2's continued presence in the region is the company's plans to build a TB2 factory inside Ukraine. The Bayraktar TB2 drones, manufactured by the Turkish defense company Baykar, made headlines at the start of Russia's large-scale invasion for helping Ukraine by strengthening Kiev's airstrike capabilities. Just weeks before Russian President Vladimir Putin launched the war, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan struck a deal with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during a visit to Kiev, allowing Ukrainian factories to produce Turkish drones. This agreement is now beginning to show its effects, with Baykar breaking ground on a drone factory near Kiev in February. The factory, which will take 12 months to build, is expected to create 500 jobs and produce 120 units a year. The plans between Ukraine and Turkey for the drone factory have seriously irritated Russia. After the Turkish private defense company Baykar announced that the UAV factory being built in Ukraine would start production within a year, Dmitry Belik, a member of the Russian parliament's International Affairs Committee, said that the factory would become a legitimate target for Moscow. The Russian Russia cannot impose a ban on Turkey on this issue, but has the right to counter it. Belik also said that even if Russian forces hit Bayraktar, it would not affect Turkish-Russian relations. Despite such threatening statements from the Russian official, Turkey gave good news on this issue. The Turkish defense firm, Baykar, has announced that it has started construction of a factory near Kiev, which is expected to employ around 500 people by 2024, and is expected to produce the famous Bayraktar TB2 drone, or the new TB3 drone. Perhaps in the future, Turkey can help Ukraine with the Anka-3 unmanned fighter jet and the Hurjet fighter jet, as it did with the TB2 drones, 
In this way, Russia may experience a second shock in the face of Turkey's move and lose its air dominance in Ukraine's coastal settlements, especially in the Black Sea. Thank you for following us.